Hello, welcome to WorshipTutorials.com. I'm Bradford. Hello, friends. I'm Brian. So, can the Helix profile or that, something of that nature that capture? Is, that is the clickbait. That's the clickbait, but we're going to deliver on it because we're going to answer that we question. We call this legit it's bait. It's legit bait. Yes. Uh, in short, the answer is no, but yes. Yeah, no, <laughs> no but yes. So, Line 6 has not released some new feature in the Helix that allows it to profile an actual amplifier, but we have figured out how to hack the Helix, if you will, and get it to essentially run what you could think of as a profile in of a, a sense. real amp. In a and sense. even get amps like our Matchless Chieftain, which lives over here on the desk, uh, in the Helix, amp models that don't exist. So we're going to talk today about how is this done? What does it sound like? We're going to We're going to kind of talk about how it's done. Eh, we'll give you a little bit. <laughs> We're going to A B for you uh, what these amps sound like versus the Helix patches that we've created. All that coming in this video. <laughs> So we're talking in this video about our Tone Match series of patches that are available for Line, line 6 hardware, Helix, HX uh, Stomp, and Pod, Go, and Pod Go, unless they're dual amp patches, which can't fit in the Pod Go. You can only do one amp. So um, just really briefly what these are. What we've done is taken the Line 6, the HX amp model, or an HX amp model. Let's take the AC30 uh, Top Boost TM patch that we have. We took the Line 6 amp model of the AC30 Top Boost, which is the SX30 model. We take our own AC30 amp, which maybe you'll see a picture of it here on the screen. It's a 2002 Korg era Vox AC30 Top Boost with Celestian Blues, sounds amazing. It's a desired model of that. Yeah, amp. it's a good one. And uh, what we've done is we've created a pretty complex, I guess you could think of it as impulse response that matches the Helix amp model without a cab, first of all, matches the Helix amp model to the actual amp. Not just the amp, but the amp, the microphones that we use to record it, which our kind of go-to combo is a Royer 121 and an Earthworks SR25. We kind of like that more than the 12157. We run that into uh, uh, a couple of different preamp options we have. Most of the time it's like a Neve style 1073, or uh, we have Universal Audio uh, 710 uh, preamps that we run into. And we apply a little EQ after that as well to sort of get that mic'd amp to sound exactly like what we want it to sound like. And it sounds pretty much like mm -hmm. the amp in the room, just like with a little sweetness. Yeah. Like that's important to us. We're not just trying yeah. to make it sound yeah, good. Yeah, my we're voice to, just broke. <laughs> we're not just trying to make it sound good. We're trying to get it to sound like the amp. Because yeah. a lot of times what you hear on a record and you mm -hmm. say like, oh man, that's some killer tone. That is not the tone. Yeah. That is like compressed preamped, yeah. microphoned, all of that stuff. So we try to get to sound as much like the amp as yep. possible. So then we've got that amp sound. We've got that mic'd amp that sounds awesome. We've got the Helix amp model. And what we do is we create an impulse response that matches the Helix amp model to the mic'd amp. So that impulse response, you could essentially think of it as the cab, the speaker, the microphone chain, all of that, and some extra information in it that matches the Helix amp model to the actual amp. So we're calling these tone match patches because we're essentially just matching one thing in the Helix to a real world thing. And what we found is it works with amps that don't exist in Helix. And that's what we did with some stuff. Yep, it's like our Chieftain. We created a Chieftain patch using our matchless Chieftain, using an amp model in the Helix that's close to that, but not really that. So in that sense, it's kind of like profiling or capturing. Profiling is a Kemper term. Uh, what, what does Neural call it? Capture. Capturing, like that's what these other units do to actually like create digital versions of real world amps. We're doing that and we're doing it in a way that works with Helix, that works with HX Stomp 
and Podgo. You're given an amp model mm -hmm. in the unit, uh, aside from what we're talking about, like what we did here. Mm -hmm. If you want an AC30, you pull up the AC30 and you have full range of controls. Yeah. You get the normal controls that the amp has and they actually give you some other ones too. Sag, hum, ripple, bias, bias some other yeah. different things, which kind of like allow you to tweak the amp to sound like the tubes are really old or the tubes yeah. are really new. It's things you could do if you knew how to build an amp. And, yeah. And or if your amp had just amp, been, you, you know, if your amp is just really old and the tubes are yeah. worn out, lots of different things you could do. But you get the full range of controls and there's like no limits on it. Mm -hmm. When you, you do, turn the gain all the way up, all, if you want, all the way down. you can do that. Yeah. Um, the difference with Neural, the captures, uh, the Quad Cortex does have amp models in it. So mm -hmm. it is similar to like what you can do with the Helix. But a capture, if you were to capture an amp, Mm -hmm. That's Neural's terminology. And then if you were to profile an amp, that's Kemper's terminology. Mm -hmm. The capture of the profile is like a digital picture of that amp's chain in that exact period of time. Yep. So adding gain is not the best idea. Like if you want a, a yeah. dirtier patch, like that unit has to create it artificially. Mm -hmm. So if a profile doesn't have enough gain for you, you need to choose another profile or another capture. And you can make some adjustments but basically you need to treat the eq and the gain as kind of like like a mic eq mm -hmm. like on a channel of a board yeah. so you can't do like drastic changes what we've done it's not quite a model of an amp like the helix on its own and it's not quite mm -hmm. like the kemper profiles or the quad cortex captures it's kind of like a little bit of both yeah the, you can't do anything insanely drastic but well, you can make changes the helix amp model still it's is, still there is the foundational piece of it so like for the AC30 amp tone match patch, for example, you can change the gain mm -hmm. on the AC30 on the amp model and it will respond like an AC30. You can change the, the tone you know, controls of it and it will respond that way. Um, where it gets different is like with the Chieftain patch, for example. The Chieftain patch uses channel two of the DC30. So when you crank the gain on that, you're gonna get characteristics of that map of the it's DC30 gonna be a different, yeah. rather than the chieftain it's still going to sound like the chieftain yeah. because you've got that impulse response that's sort of transforming it um but so these tone match patches are more flexible than a kemper profile for example yeah you can make more changes to them and they will feel and respond like an amp section we're going to a b the helix patches versus the actual amps so we're going to show you 
how close they really sound to the mic mic sound of the amps. Now, keep in mind for what we've done, we're matching the helix or the the Line Six amp model to the mic sound of the amp. So it's the amp with the microphones through the preamps, any kind of EQ and post processing that we've done. All right, so this is our mic setup on, this is the Vox AC30 that we tone match for the top boost patch. Um, just wanna really briefly go over this. This is a Royer 121 here. This is an Earthworks SR25. Uh, we, again, we use this sort of as a, a alternative to an SM57, we like the way it sounds. Um, pretty much how we mic everything here at Orish Tutorials yep. when we do stuff like for Kemper, Quad Cortex, and these tone match patches. And then these mics just run back into, into the other room where we run them through uh, various preamps and things. We get them to sound exactly like we like them. Uh, but this is our basically our mic setup, and it's down the hall from the studio. So we can close the doors and we can hear the mic'd amp which is really important that you hear the mic sound of the amp rather than the amp in the room with you because that's what you're matching. Now the preamp that we used initially to do the tone matches is my Warm Audio 273 EQ, which is kind of on the fritz at the moment. And, you know, when you mic an amp up one time versus another time, it's one of the things about mic and amps, they always kind of sound just a tiny bit different. So we're using the same mic setup that we use when we did the tone matches. We're actually running it through a different preamp I'm running it through a Universal Audio 4710. So it's the 710 trans, whatever they call them. Twinfinity preamps, it's right here. Um, so it's gonna sound slightly different just because it's a different preamp, it's mic'd on a different day, but it should sound really close. And so hopefully what you'll see in this section uh, is, is the Helix patch, the Tone Match patch sounds almost exactly like the mic damp. The way we're setting this up, Bradford is gonna play a few samples. We're able to reamp those samples. So we're running through this RJM switcher here. The guitar goes in and then we can then send it out to any number of things. So recording the direct sound and then we're gonna put it through the Helix and then put it through the amp. So what you'll get is the exact same performance played through first the Helix patch, tone match patch, and then the amp, which we matched. So you'll hear exactly how close they sound. <laughs>
handful of these. Many, many more coming. And we just, people were very curious and we just got them on the site. You and should see my reverb watch list. <laughs> it's getting a little crazy. The, the, our demos are slowly trickling out and so mm. we're just making them. Yeah. We're not, we just don't want to throw them out all at once. Yeah. Um, but we've already gotten a handful of questions yeah. that are, are being repeated. Yeah. Um, and so we wanted to kind of address some things because it's, it's weird. And it, in it's people, a new thing. That's, it's new. I know one that we've been getting is like, how is this like different than our older patches? Than our older patches, yeah. aside from like what we've all just said in this video. Yeah. As far as you, the user, are concerned, mm. there's like nothing different you need to do. In our yep. patches, normally you get the patch, you get the IR. Yeah. You just do everything exactly the same. Import them and yeah, that it easy, easy peasy. Not not a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, some of these patches we did do with the the amp first and then uh, wet effects after, and that made this that meant that there was only one amp. The amp is mono. The effects are stereo. We have done a couple where the amps are in stereo and all wet effects run into the it's front. It's just two instances of it. Yeah, yeah, two instances into it if you want. Um, also, if you want to, you can easily just grab, you're gonna need both the amp block and the IR block, mm -hmm. but you could drop this anywhere. You know, if you wanted to make your own combo yeah. of amps, yep. you liked our AC30, you liked our Chieftain, well, that's Supreme, but you can do it anyways, you know, if you want to. WT but, Supreme. WT Supreme. That's Brian's Patch Reborn, yeah. really what that is. <laughs> so another question we get is, can we use these impulse responses either with other ant models oh, in yes. Helix oh, yeah. or with other hardware like yeah. Iridium or ACS-1. Yeah, so the answer to that is you, technically, yes, you can. Technically. Um, the way that we're setting these up... just wave files. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, that's true. They're just regular old IRs. So the way we're setting these up is the impulse response and the ant model are very tied together yeah. to make the sound that sounds just like the real world amp. So um, I have experimented. Or the target that we're trying to get it to sound like. Yeah. I have experimented with, say, that AC30 amp model with using it with the Matchless DC30 channel one, because that's a very AC30 ish yeah. sound in the thing. Helix. It sounds great. I've experimented with using it with something completely different, like a Fender. Uh, style amp and it doesn't sound as great. So the answer to that is uh, Certainly you're welcome to experiment with it and you're if not it gonna sounds, break anything, right? If it sounds good, it is good. That's sort of the bottom yeah, line. Do what you want um, Whether it will work well with Iridium or ACS one. We actually haven't tried, I haven't that, tried that yet No, I, I did have some people ask and I told them I was like if you do grab it yeah. Because in general, it's like the same idea. The unit does not know, this is a Worship Tutorials Tone Match. You can't use this. Yes, you can't use it. It doesn't yeah. know that. Um, it just sees it as an IR, and it, it may yeah. not sound great at all. Yeah. It may sound fine. It may sound awesome, but you're yeah. not going to break anything. So, so these IRs, really what they're taking the place of is the cab and the speaker, and then the extra, whatever extra information is needed to match the Helix amp model to the actual amp. So they do basically function as cab IRs, yeah. if you want to think of it that way, with just some extra sauce. So um, you could try it with Iridium. Now, I know with Iridium, they a Strymon simple, requires 96K 500 millisecond uh, impulse responses. These impulse responses are all, we export them at 48K 500 milliseconds. So you'd need to convert it. Um, so you need a little know-how. We, we your... may experiment with doing yeah, some iridium we, stuff. I but... thought it would be cool to take an iridium because we could do that. We could match the iridium to uh, that AC30 um, or any number of amps. And what does that do? Yeah, it's it, it's an experiment we should try. We should at least try. At it. this point, we don't have anything specific to iridium. Now, ACS one, I believe, will accept the impulse response as it is delivered with the Helix patch. So if you really want to know if you're an Iridium or ACS1 user, you could grab one of these and try it out. Yeah. Um, if you do, report back to us. Yeah. So these patches are coming in at a different price point than what you may yep. be used to from us. You know, you got to pay for gas. Well. Inflation. It's a joke because I, I work from home. I yeah. don't, I don't uh, drive anywhere. I, I, I drive 40 minutes to get here. <laughs> Bradford has to pay for gas. Bra Nick drives like an hour. Yeah. Um, the, <laughs> the patches are a different price point. What it takes to get here. Brian mm. and I were dissecting this the other day. And as we think of like how we got here, we think yeah. about the step before. Hmm. And then we're like, okay, well, we got there. How about the step before that? The step before that. Yeah. And so this truly is a culmination of like six, seven years, almost eight. How long has Helix been out? About Several six, years yeah. of us making patches 
for We're lots of different profiling things. Profiling and profiling, like, like we recording amps and everything that we we do. We're pulling the the, the knowledge and the skill from yeah. this right here. Was a whole nother buy in. in yeah. both senses of the word. Yeah, for us, the, these patches have required a lot of a financial and, and, and commitment. I have to actually buy the amp. Yeah, that we're tone matching. That's how you do it. And that's not cheap. That's how you do it. <laughs> so these these yeah. are a premium product. I think we actually yeah. technically call our other patches premium patches. I think we do. I think that was a little They're premature. They're in a folder on my computer called premium patches. That was a little premature. This is this is a different thing, mm -hmm. and so it warrants a different price point. And yeah, we, we appreciate everything that has gotten us where we are, and we hope that. This this premium, supremium patch. Mm. Supremium is what I want to call it. Supremium, I like it. Supremium. Mm -hmm. We hope that you enjoy these because we it, have. It really is like next level in our own opinion. Like when we had this idea and we tried it and we got that first patch, what would we do first? The 6161. Oh yeah, it was the Gretsch. Because we had it mic'd up already because we were doing some other stuff with it. And it was just like... It sounds just like it. It's amazing. It, it almost seemed like a fluke, though. We're like, well, maybe it's just because. And like, then we and then and then we tried the AC30. Yeah. We we're like, okay, this is it. There's a separation it's like, now. This is what an AC30 sounds it's, like. It's yeah. it's so cool. So we really did impress even ourselves, which is high praise. <laughs> but uh, but we and we've heard from many of you that have Silverback been using gorilla. these. The full yes. fitting leather yeah. jacket. Yeah. You look dry and marbled like a premium beef steak. Premium beef steak. That's high praise. <laughs> That's high praise. That's high praise. <laughs> and we've heard from many of you that you are experiencing the same thing as well. It's just like next level. So there are links below where you can go to. We're going to have a separate section for in like the Helix page, the Stomp page, the Podgo, you know, product pages where you can see these all the tone match patches. Uh, There's velvet ropes you have to walk right. through to get to it. On the it's website. called Tone Town. Tone Town. That's Heyo. right. Uh, we are the mayors, co-mayors. We have... Co-mayors with Christ. <laughs> there you go. We have a handful of them available uh, now. We have uh, plans to make a lot more. Like I'm oh, just wow. looking around at all the amps in here, and they're all going to get tone match patches. Like I mentioned earlier... Um, my reverb watch list is getting a little out of hand and I have plans to buy a lot of it. So we're going to make tone match patches. The idea is we're going to release Buckle up. One of the, at least one of these a week moving forward for a while. Um, maybe I can you know, convince uh, HW over at Tone Junkie to let me borrow some of his amps. I'd love to get like some cool vintage he stuff has all going the, on. He has like the whole vintage Fender collection. We'll every, take all Every of them. amp from 1965 or four. There's a lot. Every amp Fender made from 1964. Jonathan Sullivan owns it. Not and every one, like you every can model. Get, yeah, every model. You can get a Kemper profile of all of them, but I'd love to have the Tote Match Helix patches. I want the Fibro Verb. Holy good. And that thing is good. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, many more of these to come. We've got a lot of work just with the amps we have now, uh, but we're going to get some cool stuff. We've been. Let us know in the comments what would you like to see in the Helix stuff that doesn't exist? I got my eye on a Dr. Z Z Rec. I've always wanted one of those. Anyway. It's a really exciting time. He's got a dumbbell in his cart, too. <laughs> it's a really exciting time. Don't make him do it. Uh, to be a Helix or Stomp or Podgo owner. Uh, this product is cool because it's just like, it feels like it's later on in its life cycle, but it's it just keeps getting better. Mm. Yeah. Keep on getting better. Have we delivered on the clickbait title? I want to say we did. Yeah, we explained it. Yeah. <laughs> but if you haven't already subscribed, click the bell because... You miss out on great stuff That's if right. you don't click on the bell. But uh, leave us a comment. Like Brian said, amps you want to see. But either way, thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon. Next time. Bye. Bye.